Hello everyone and welcome back to Unforgotten Tech. My name is Gregory Kraus and today we're going to be talking about balancing tires. We're going to be talking about what balancing tires means, why we need to balance tires, and last we're going to be walking through how to properly balance tires using a Coats balancing machine. Now before we get started I wanted to throw a shout out to Indominus who requested today's content on balancing tires. If you guys have any future content you want to see in videos, please leave a comment in the comment section. And if you haven't already subscribed and hit that notification bell, please do so as it's the best way to never miss any of our content. Balancing your wheels and tires is a tune up for your wheels and tires. Performing a tire balancing means evenly distributing the weight evenly around the entire circumference of the wheel and tire. By evenly distributing the weight on the wheel, the wheel will be able to roll smoothly down the road without any vibrations or damage to the tire. Wheel and tire balancing, not to be confused with wheel alignments, is needed for several reasons. The first reason is because wheels and tires come from the factory with minor imperfections that cause them to be out of balance. Secondly, over the life of tires, as they wear down, the balance will change causing the tires to go out of balance. And the last common reason is due to road hazards or impacts to the wheels. These impacts can cause the tire's weight to distribute to change causing an imbalance. When a wheel or tire is out of balance, you'll find that the customer's concern is uneven tire wear or a vibration in your steering wheel, floorboard, or your seat. All right, now that we know what a wheel balancing is and why we need it, let's grab some PPE and equipment and balance some tires ourselves. PPE needed for this job will be safety glasses, closed toed shoes, and free of any loose or hanging clothing or jewelry. For tools and equipment, we will need a wheel balancer, we'll need wheel weights, and a wheel weight pliers. All right, let's go ahead and balance some tires. Assuming that the wheels are off the car and ready to balance, we will start by removing any wheel weights currently on, if any. We will then fit the proper cone to the wheel. This cone will go on the shaft first with the tapered side facing outward. We will then slide the tire on the outside of the wheel facing out and screw the wing nut on until the tire is snug and secure. Now we can select the type of balance we want to use. The first and most common setting will be dynamic. This will give us hammer on weights on inside and the outside of the rim in precise locations. We also have RV setting followed by alloy one, two, three, and four. These will be combinations of hammer on or sticky weights on the wheels. The locations are shown in the picture where they are correlated to the wheel. We then have a static balance. This is a balance where the location of weights are averaged in the middle and one set of weight is used. This method is especially prone to going out of balance as the tires wear. Last is a match mount. This is where you will rotate the tire itself on the wheel to balance without wheel weights. We now can make our measurements. Our first measurement is going to be to measure offset. We will use the arm from the side of the machine to do this. We will slide the arm out and into the wheel's outside edge. Wheel width is next. We will use the pincer tool to make this measurement. This tool is broken up into halves of an inch. Last measurement we will be putting in is the rims measurement. We will get this measurement from the tire size. Make sure that you mind the decimal point in the measurement. Now we have our measurements inputted and we can drop the hood. When dropped, the hood will automatically run and measure the tire's balance. Note that if the machine does not run and you receive an error message, check your setup and make sure that the spin nut is secure along with the tire. The wheel balancer will indicate locations for the wheel weights based on function selection and locations. The left screen will be for the inside of the wheel, while the right screen will be for the outside of the wheel. We will then rotate the wheel until the light bar flashes, indicating for us to stop rotating the wheel. On the wheel balancer, there is a groove indicating the location of the wheel weights in relation to the tire. We will hammer on the selected weights in this location. 
In this case, we have 1.25 ounces on the inside of the tire and 1.25 ounces on the outside of the tire. We will drop the hood after the wheel weights have been installed. This will run the machine again. We are looking for the two screens to zero out. If the machine asks for more weight, there is something wrong. Adding weight additional times is called chasing weights and it could have your tires looking like this. In this event, you should first check to ensure the tire is seating properly as sometimes the cone will catch on the edge or simply be the wrong size for some wheel centers. Also, check the wheel's hub center to ensure that the center hole is not damaged enough to affect roundness. Another issue could be something inside the tire. The number and variety of things that can get left inside the tire is truly astonishing. Anything inside the tire will affect the centripetal force as the tire spins. Then come to rest in a different place and do it all over again, continuously and dynamically throwing off the balance. Just to recap today, we talked about balancing tires. We learned what balancing tires is, why we need to balance tires, and last we went over how to properly balance tires using a Coats balancing machine. My name is Gregory Kraus from Unforgotten Tech, and I want to thank each and every one of you for watching our video today. And remember, be strong, believe, be unforgotten.